Hi class, Professor Anderson here. Uh, we're talking about physics again. Here we are again, talking about more physics. You guys getting bored with the physics? I hope not. Hopefully it's getting more exciting. I mean, if it's, if it's not getting more exciting, let me know and I'll, I'll start in improving the situation. Okay. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I'll, I'll figure something out. So um, let's take a look at one of your homework problems specifically. Uh, this usually wakes people up. And this is a problem that we looked at uh, last time. We had one of the students demonstrate how to do this problem. And I just wanted to do it again to show you how I would approach the problem. And remember those six steps or five steps that we have for dealing with force law problems. Okay, this is the approach that we're gonna take. And this is the, uh, the hanging beam problem. And the idea is we have a big heavy beam that's hanging from two cables. And we need to figure out what the tension is in those two cables. So here's our beam M. We have one cable going up like that. We have one cable going up like that. And we're gonna tell you what the angle is for those two cables. That's theta one. This is theta two, okay? And you would be given some numbers for both the mass and theta one and theta two. So, let's see. We're wanting to figure out T1 and T2 in this system. I've got my picture. What's the next thing that I should do? Let's go with Chris. Chris, what do you think the next thing I should do is? Draw a free body diagram. Excellent. So, <clears throat> Chris said, let's draw the free body diagram. Free body diagram is just this. Mass M becomes a dot. That beam becomes a dot. It's all concentrated at one point. Chris, what are the forces that are acting on our beam now? Uh, you have the tension set in one cable and the tension in the other supporting it. All right. And then you have the gravity, the mass times gravity. Good. Good, I totally agree so far, everything looks fine. But what we wanna do next is let's break up that free body diagram into components. We know that MG is straight down, no problem. But T1 is up at an angle, and so there's some component of T1 going up, and there's some component of T1 going to the left. T2 is up to the right, so there's some component up and some component to the right. So I'm gonna need two more forces going up. One due to T1 vertical, one due to T2 vertical, and I'm gonna need two more forces, one to the left, one to the right, or the horizontal component. T1 is on the hypotenuse. Theta one is right there. What is this side of the triangle? Lauren? Lauren? Uh, what do you think? What's this side of the triangle? It'd be cosine. Okay. T1 cosine theta 1. And then obviously that has to be T1 sine theta 1. Perfect, right? Our angle's there. The right angle is there. So that's what it looks like. We can do the same thing for the other triangle for T2. T2 is going to look like that. And if this is theta 2, and that's our right angle, then the top is T2 sine theta 2, and the left side is T2 cosine theta 2. All right, so now we've identified all those forces, and now we can put them on our free body diagram. The one to the left is T1 sine theta 1. The one to the right is T2 sine theta 2. The one going up is T1 cosine theta 1. And the other one going up is right here, T2 cosine theta 2. And so now this is a very nice looking free body diagram because it's in components. We have broken it up into X and Y components. All right, we're up to step two. We have our proper free body diagram. What's next? Somebody give me an idea what you should do next. 
What's step three on our list? Uh, in the back, Laura? Um, you do the forces for the X direction and Y direction. All right, I like it. Forces for the X direction. What are the forces in the X direction, Laura? Um, T2, sine theta 2, mm -hmm. and T1, sine theta 1. Like that? No, minus. Minus. Why do I put a minus sign there? Because it's going to the left. Because it's pointing to the left. Exactly right. What is this equal to? Um, um, and then acceleration in the x direction. Okay. And if it's a hanging beam, what is the acceleration in the x direction? Zero. Zero. Good. So we have one nice little equation here. T2 sine theta 2 equals t1 sine theta 1. We're going to use that again. What about the next step? What should I do next? Somebody else have a thought what I should do next? Yesenia, you had a thought about what I should do next? Yeah. Put the force in the y direction. Forces in the y direction. Okay. What are the forces in the y direction? So T1 cosine theta 1 plus T2 cosine theta 2 minus 10 And what is that going to equal? Um, mass times the acceleration in the y direction. And what is the acceleration in the y direction? Zero. Good. Okay, and now look, we have a nice little equation here. T1 cosine theta 1 plus T2 cosine theta 2. And I can move this mg over to the other side. So we'll write it equal to mg, like so. <clears throat> All right, now we need to do some math. Let's do some math. We're going to take this equation right here, and let's solve it for t2. t2 equals t1 sine theta 1 divided by sine theta 2. And now I can plug it into this equation right here. So what does this equation become? T1 cosine theta 1 plus T2, which we just said is this, T1 sine theta 1 divided by sine theta 2. And don't forget about that cosine theta 2. And all that is still equal to mg. And now I can solve this thing for T1. Look what I get. I get T1 equals mg divided by a big mess, which is what? Cosine theta 1 plus all of this stuff, which is sine theta 1 over Aha, uh -huh. sine theta 2, cosine theta 2, that is tangent theta 2, and it's in the denominator. So now I have an equation for T1. If I know all those things, I can plug in some real numbers and get an answer. And now I can take this answer and plug it back into here and write down T2. So let's put a box around this one. And now T2 is going to be this thing. I'll put the sine theta 1 over sine theta 2 out in front. And then I have to just multiply all that by T1. Mg over cosine theta 1 plus sine theta 1 over tangent theta 2. And now you can plug in all your numbers and get an answer. Remember, I said that when you, when you do these problems, keep your variables all the way to the end, because that's going to allow you to check some stuff. What we can check pretty easily are the units, right? mg is force. All the sines, cosines, and tangents are unitless. So force here, Newton, force there. Good. Let's take a look at a limit 
which is perhaps a little bit more difficult to see, but I'm sure you know the answer already.